This is the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, and it's a little bit like an academic. You see, as with academics, the more letters you have after your name, the more important you are. This SVJ3, it's good. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to give it a thorough reviewing, and to do that, I'm going to talk you around the outside and the inside, tell you about the upgrades you get with this SVJ over normal Aventadors. I'm going to take it for a drive, I'm going to do a brake test in it, and of course, I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. Now, if you like these kind of cars, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, you will not miss a single one of these uploads. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this review by talking about the design. So the normal Lamborghini Aventador is a crazy looking car to start with, but this SVJ just takes things to another level. And most of the design changes are to do with aero, such as this huge rear wing, the engine cover, which is slatted in a certain way to feed the air to this huge rear wing. Then there's a massive rear diffuser as well. So this is all carbon fiber. Also, I like the exhaust pipes. So they're like those on the Huracan Performante. So they exit from the middle rather than being lowered down like on the standard car. And no matter where you look, Look here, all the vents are real. Look, huge vents there for the big rear radiators. I mean, it's just a crazy, crazy looking car. Here from the side, you can really appreciate just how low to the ground this Lamborghini Aventador is. And being a V12, it gets the scissor doors. Yes. Now, the SVJ has some upgrades over the normal Aventador. So this whole area here, this air intake, is slightly redesigned for improved airflow. You've obviously got your SVJ stickers i was gonna say badging but it, it seems like a sticker to me then down the side this is slightly redesigned as well and you've got unique alloy wheels 20 inches at the front 21s at the back and they're center locking so you can change them quickly when you pull into the pits here at the front the svj looks even more aggressive than the normal aventador it's got a completely new front bumper and look we've got carbon fiber here there's vents here vents here more vents here for improving the airflow and yeah look at this Allah. Now that doesn't refer to God or anything, although it's slightly God-like in the way it works, because it actually means Aerodynamica Lamborghini Ativa, and it stands for Active Aerodynamics. So you've got these flaps here, which can open or close, depending on whether you want more downforce or less drag. You know, it all relates to the speed that you're going. Now I'm gonna give you another translation as well, SVJ. So it's super veloce, which means super fast, and J refers to a racing category in the FIA or something like that. So it, it, it's reserved for Lamborghini's most high-performance, racing-focused cars. There you go. You are looking at one of the main reasons to buy a Lamborghini Aventador. It's 6.5 litre, naturally aspirated V12. Now in the standard car, it puts out 730 horsepower, but here in the SVJ, you have 770 horsepower and 720 newton meters of torque. And look at this, you got the firing order there. 112, 4, 9, 2, 11, 6, 7, 3, 10, 5, 8. Gives it a unique sound. So shall we experience it? Go on, start it up. Wow. Let's have some friends. Stop, 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 that's enough. You can cut it, you can cut it. Otherwise no one will hear me. Now this engine is mated to a seven speed, single clutch, robotized manual gearbox, but it does have launch control. So let's use it. Now I'm gonna launch this car to see how quick it is a little later on in this video. Before then though, there's some other things we need to look at. It's a good thing that a car with this much performance has some serious brakes on it. So the SVJ gets carbon ceramics as standard. You've got 400 millimeter discs at the front, gripped by six piston calipers, 380 millimeters at the back, gripped by four piston calipers. It's also got special Pirelli P0 Corsa tires, and the tires at the back, the cross section, 355 millimeters. Now, how will that affect the braking performance? Actually, before we do that, I've got a question for you. Why is it the tire manufacturers do the cross section in millimeters, 355, but they actually do the diameter in inches? It's odd. Why is that? Anyway, let's do that brake test. All right, gonna do a brake test from 70 miles an hour. Full emergency stop, let's do it. Here we go. How long will it take to stop? Let's find out now. <laughs> oh god my neck hurts 
Okay, look, it stopped from 70 in 42 meters. That's very, very good. And it really felt like that as well, because I think I got whiplash. It's a risk doing this job, you see. You know, it's very, very dangerous. The SVJ has a few suspension changes over the standard Aventador, so the anti-roll bars are 50% stiffer. Also, the active dampers, which let you choose between a softer and harder setting, have been recalibrated for a more sporty drive. Don't know what the accent was all about. This car has variable ratio steering, which is designed to make it feel responsive without being twitchy at high speeds. You also get rear wheel steering, so the rear wheels will turn in the same direction as the fronts when you're going quicker to help the car turn into a corner, whereas when you're going slowly, they turn in the opposite direction, a bit like a forklift truck to help make it a bit more maneuverable. And the rear wheel steering on the SVJ is tweaked to work with the active aero to make it even more dynamic. This car has a limited slip differential on the rear axle for better corner exiting traction. Also, the four wheel drive system has been tweaked slightly for this SVJ. So you now have 3% more torque going to the back wheels. Bet you can really feel that. Let's find out, let's take it for a drive. Let's experience this Aventador SVJ. Oh my God. <laughs> Obviously that engine dominates the whole experience. I remember driving just the standard Aventador and it felt more cumbersome and leaden footed than this thing. The steering is super sharp. Actually the agility as well, the way it turns in. It's quite remarkable for such a big car like this. Oh my gosh. The rear wheel steering is definitely helping. And the suspension changes and upgrades for the SVJ. Oof. This is a visceral experience though. It's not a relaxing drive. <laughs> wow. Those gear changes, downshifts are good. The upshifts can be a bit jerky. There's a little bit of a knack to it. You sort of want to lift off when you're changing, so I'm accelerating. Hey, you can smooth them out, otherwise you're not like jerking about in the place and you get out the road like that. Whoa! I mean, such a thing, this. My goodness. Wow! When you're hitting it around, this thing, oh, it's got the performance, it's got the grip. It's surprisingly agile and it does move around a bit underneath you. It feels a lot less inert than a normal Aventador. It's sort of playful, yet you still got that brilliant traction from the four wheel drive system. Loads of grip from those huge tires. And all the time you're being serenaded by that beautiful, beautiful engine. Sometimes though, when you're not hooning it, you're just gonna wanna cruise around. So I'm gonna put it into Strada, which I believe is Italian for street. If it's wrong, tell me in the comments. Okay, so it's gonna do its own thing now. It's still an event. You do pick up the bumps in the road, but they're not terrible. And these seats, they're actually pretty comfy. I could definitely do some miles in it. Let's put it into automatic mode for the gearbox as well. For just cruising around, it's fine. The only major problems are just the sheer size of it. So it's super wide. And then there's the visibility, which is really awful, especially out of that back window. But I can live with it. It's comfy enough. It's not too intrusive. It's not too hard work. What I think. This Lamborghini feels like a proper supercar here on the inside. You've got this massive expansive dash, loads of texture to it. It's all very angled, a huge center console separating you from your passenger. You're sitting on the floor almost. And look at this, this little red cover for the start button. It's like the cover you'd have on the missile launcher on a fighter jet. I mean, you really do feel like you're in a cockpit right here. It's a lovely steering wheel. It's got quite a sense of occasion to it, this car. I love the huge gear shifter paddles as well, your aluminium pedals. I like the way you open the door. So you press this button here and it just lowers the window slightly. And then you pull that one and push the door up. And then there's this handy handle for shutting it as well. Now this SVJ gets loads of extra carbon fiber about the place. There's Alcantara everywhere, white stitching, white piping, more Alcantara on the roof lining and more white piping and some leather here as well. Best bit, SVJ seats, like you've got SVJ logo on them there, they're carbon fiber backed and they are really comfy. You've got Alcantara on the steering wheel as well and the dead ahead marker on it. It's a really nice place to sit, it really is, but it's not that practical. There is no glove box. There are no door bins. I suppose when you open the door, things will drop out. Anyway, there are no cup holders. There's no excuse for that. I mean, where are you supposed to put your coffee? The only storage area I've found is this little net behind here. That's it. Oh, and there's a place here for your mobile phone. Let you put your mobile phone in there. Look, they're my big mobile phone. Look, look at this one. Won't fit. 
Uh, maybe it'll fit if I open it like that. There we go, yeah, that, that might fit. How do you fit? Go on, fit. Fit. It fits, yeah, but still. <laughs> That's a lot. And that brings you on to five annoying things about this car. The only luggage space you have on this car is this front boot, and its capacity is 140 litres, which is less than half of that of a Volkswagen Polo. And I'll illustrate just how small it is, because being an Italian car, you'd think you'd be able to fit a human body in here if you needed to, but can you? Let's find out. Will this shut? Will this shut? Can you fit a human body in here? No, 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 you won't fit. Well, the graphics on the digital driver's display aren't the sharpest, they're actually all right. However, those on the central infotainment system are really washed out and blocky. I mean, check out satellite navigation. It's so slow to respond, look at this. That's because this system, I'm sure it's from the previous, previous generation Audi A6, because obviously Audi owned Lamborghini and this car was first launched in 2011, the original Aventador, and they don't seem to have updated the main infotainment system. <laughs> With a car like this, you're going to want to be able to show people the engine because it's a masterpiece. However, getting at it is a bit of a palaver. You need two keys and two people. Look, and you've got to get the keys the right way round, otherwise they won't work in the opposite lock. So, put the key in there, open this hatch. See, it's finding it difficult. Are you all right? I'm struggling. Are you under pressure? There we go. There we go. It's all right. Press this button. Go on. That's it. And try not to break it. Yeah. <sighs> Then you lift this up, now you've got it released, and carefully does it. There you go, that's right. And you need to find somewhere soft to put it. So yeah, you guys leave it on the grass. And now we can look at the engine, finally. Actually, guys, can you put it back on? I want to just do that take again. <laughs> I'm only joking. You always end up getting stones collecting in these side skirts. Got a few here already, and that's just from a few miles of driving. Also, you get leaves and twigs and road grime gathering in this radiator duct here. And then to get it, you have to remove this whole panel to be able to clean it all out. The angle of the windscreen means that you get the dash reflecting in it quite badly, and it's really quite noticeable if the sun is strong. In fact, it can be so bad you can barely see out, which isn't great in a car this quick. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. This car is almost five meters long. Yeah, thanks to that rear wheel steering, it's got the turning circle of a Volkswagen Golf. This plaque here shows that this car is one of 900. And because the SVJ is a limited run car, it should hold its value well, which is handy when the starting price is 360,000 pounds. Now, if you're thinking about buying or selling your car and you wanna make sure you get a fair price for it, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow. Alternatively, just simply Google help me CarWow and my team and I'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Or we'll help you, silly car, and get a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. This car uses airflow to help it steer, a bit like a plane. You see the air goes in there and spreads along the wing and can exit through these vents underneath, but the car can shut off either side of the wing so the air can't escape, and that helps it turn into corners. It's all very clever. The use of various bits of carbon fibre and carbon ceramic brakes help reduce the weight of the normal Aventador by 50 kilos, so this thing weighs in at 1,525 kilograms. The titanium exhaust has reduced back pressure, and when you combine that with a lightweight flywheel, you get an engine that can rev quicker than in the normal Aventador. And in case you're wondering, this car's top speed is over 219 miles an hour. This big, bad Lambo is supposed to do 0-60 in 2.8 seconds, but what will it do? I'm gonna use my specialist timing gear here to measure it. I know these launch in such a brutal way. Oh. <laughs> I feel so bad for the mechanics on the car because it just drops its clutch and yeah, let's see what happens, let's do it. Can't figure out how to do it. Corsa, ESC off, there we go. Now let's do it. What's the quarter mile? Ten point eight. It was a bit of a stuttery launch, oh, but it's so so bad for the car. <laughs> that single clutch dropped. The wheels spin a bit. 
and depending on your traction levels that's your two tenths right there do i think you can do 2.8 yes it can if you get a slightly better launch but i'm not doing it again because i just have too much mechanical sympathy now electric cars the way they launch you and push you back in your seat is incredible but there's something about this the way all that energy just goes through the drivetrain the way you get those jolts when it changes gear the noise that of the engine oh it's just so much and your senses struggle to just take it all in that it all just becomes a bit of a blur now if you want to see another car actually launch quicker than this put a link to it there click in the top right hand corner of the screen there on the pop out banner you can see what the car is and what the time is So then, what's my final verdict on the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I'm going to ask this guy here, what do you reckon we should do? Buy it. He would say that. He did actually buy it. He's the owner. His name's Phil Hine, and you can follow him on Instagram, down below in the description, to say thanks, you know, for lending us this car. I reckon you should actually avoid it. <laughs> it's, it's only because I can't afford it. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, let me know of any other videos you'd like me to do in the comments below. If you click there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can actually sign up to the Car Wow newsletter, where we'll keep you up to date of all the latest news and reviews from the car world in between these video uploads. So just click on that, sign up, it's completely free. And of course, you can cancel anytime you want to. Thanks for watching. See you next time.